Welcome to the Travel Man Podcast with your host, Ben. And on today's podcast, I have my lovely wife, Mandy, back on. And we'll be talking about all elements of planning for a holiday. So buckle up, put your chair in an upright position, and let's go. been on two podcasts <laughs> this uh, will be my third it is your third and hey how are you good how are you yeah good you didn't think i was recording no then. no i was talking a lot of rubbish thought, no. <laughs> <laughs> no rubbish was good this okay. is good rubbish cool now on today's podcast we'll be talking about planning for a holiday my favorite thing and yes it's your favorite thing yeah. i also really enjoy it as well yeah um wow we're going well so <laughs> I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start off here. I'm just gonna say it's my third podcast. Who would have thought? I I wouldn't have thought <laughs> that I would have roped you in for a no, third. No, no. Trust me, it's at last. No, you'll be on many more. I don't know. I'm getting good feedback. Maybe you're getting really good feedback. Uh, people are starting to like hearing you before they hear me, <laughs> or more than like they like hearing me. But oh, I've been listening to a podcast. Travel lady. Maybe travel, travel lady. woman. But I've listening to a podcast, Dave Jackson podcast radio, and he says don't. Don't talk. Um, don't yeah. Don't banter before a podcast. So don't do what we're doing right now. But it's so, fun. It is fun. But, but I'll let's stop. I'll stop. Stop. <laughs> okay. Sorry. That's okay. Look, when when you're planning your holiday, you got to understand your budget. True. True. And you know what? Do you want a cheap holiday, mm-hmm. or do you want an expensive holiday? Obviously, we all want to go somewhere. There's going to be good value yeah. and exciting. That's true? True. Definitely. Absolutely true. So would you stay somewhere that's less comfortable than your own house? I know many occasions you've always told me that you would never stay anywhere that's less comfortable than, say, even our bed or I, our house. I think I'm not a um, – I don't like to slum it. You don't like to slum no. it. That's true. I think I'm too old for that now. And you, and you don't like <laughs> camping either. I hate camping. I don't mind camping, but – um, I just don't go enough to really. I mean, being outdoors, yeah. and being in nature is not what I don't like. It's nature's nice. It's you love nature, but you just don't want to just don't want to set tent. up a tent. I just don't want a tent or sleep on the ground. Not interested. Or sleep in a sleeping bag hate with that. a mattress. Horrible. Terrible. So you like you like to go to either I guess Airbnb, hotel, or resort. Yeah, no tents. Much. No tents. Okay. So, I guess what people got to understand, though, is do you want to travel locally, so inside your city or country? Yeah. Or do you want to go internationally, where your budget's going to change? So, if I can interject. Sure. I think what you have to determine is the time of year that you're going. Of course you do. But also, um, that will then determine when you do know the time of year that you're going, where is the best area to go to. Where? Where. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So, therefore, it could be internationally or it could be locally. It just depends on the time. Well, there's nothing wrong, though, with seeing your own country. Definitely not. True? True. It's generally cheaper because you're Um, within your generally. Generally. generally, Australia is an exception. (laughs) Australia is the exception. (laughs) But I'm saying generally it's cheaper because you don't have to pay for that. Airfares. Airfare overseas. So Sure. That's pretty cool. Um, you know, you'd think maybe, what's the weather like? What am I talking about? Who knows? This is getting <laughs> cut out. <laughs> what's the weather like? Mm. Where you're going? No. Okay. Cut that out too. <laughs> cut that out. <laughs> cut it out. But anyway, so, so Mandy, why do you think Australia is an exception? Um, Australia seems to be a really expensive place to visit. Mm. And to live in general, I mean, eating out is really quite, can be pricey. Um, Certainly can be, yeah. I think if you compare it to, say, the States, America, yeah. there's a there's a wide range of choice when it comes to actually eating out because of the population size, I suppose. Yeah. Um, even now, accommodation tends to be expensive too. It, Especially in Melbourne's expensive. Yeah, and even Sydney. 
Sydney very much so. When you compare what you can get in terms of quality mm. in other places around the world, you, we really do pay more. Um, and I, I think Australia is attractive to people where the Australian dollar is obviously weaker against their currency. You know, European travellers, English travellers, even American travellers won't find it as pricey. But us, when we've got Asia on our doorsteps, um, when you compare... Asia's the, incredibly the, cheap. Exactly. So when you compare the cost of being um, at home, yes, it's convenient in terms of what you were saying before. We don't have to travel too far. We can even ha- do a road trip, which, again, can be a bit cheaper because you can stay in motels or Airbnbs. Um that's that's probably comparable. That's a good way to see um, Australia. But if you're flying from one side to the other, expecting to stay in hotels that are central, you will have to pay quite a bit. Absolutely. So, as I mentioned about a- Asia being on our doorstep, yes. when we think about the cost to travel to Bali... Or that you know, was still an expensive flight that we had to fork for out for us. Yes, because we probably booked at we an booked expensive way too time. late. Yeah. However, um, going to um, Singapore is cheap. Going to um, Thailand, Malaysia, mm. even even Japan, it's all cheap from Australia. That immediate Asian um, destinations close to us are really cheap. So, if you're a family that's traveling, or even a couple. And you look and see when the best time it is for you to travel. And if it's Asia, then definitely that would be your, probably your first pick. Absolutely. I mean, there's certain places as well in Asia that are a lot more cheaper than others. So J- Japan, for instance, is a lot more expensive than Bali, whereas Thailand is cheaper than Vietnam or probably comparable Ooh, maybe. Yeah. But um, I mean, Singapore's- They're all one- different prices. Oh, Singapore's expensive. Yeah. Singapore is very expensive, actually. So when we think about um, the time to visit, so for me, I work in a customer-facing role. Yep. So I only can take t- time off at you know periods where it's not going to impact on my customers. Absolutely. So then that really for us determines where we'll go because it will be the time of year that's um, got the best weather in certain places because we don't want to be... We, we're not snowboarders or skiers, so we don't really follow the winter. Definitely not. Maybe a little bit of tobogganing now and then. <laughs> yeah. Or making a snowman. <laughs> but we follow the summer, I suppose, the warm weather. So we want to know where, where the best destination is in the time we've got off. So, for example, um, you know, we've potentially got November off this year. And the first thing we did is look and see where the best places were to stay in exactly. November. So we made we went online. Yep. And we typed it in Google. Yeah. We said, Google, <laughs> let us know which are the best places to go to in November. It's yeah. easy. You just type it in Google. Yeah. And Google came back to us with some ideas. Yes. And saw, oh, Vietnam's actually a very good time of the year to travel. Exactly. And also, we've got a few travel books as well. You we can do. Ha- we've got plenty of travel books. So, you can have a look and see when the best time to travel is for there. Absolutely. In those, sorry. So, for instance. Yeah. Um. Vietnam. Yep. Okay. It has variable weather. Vietnam has a monsoon season. It also has variable seasons up north. So you can really cut Vietnam in half. Yeah. Half of Vietnam, tropical. The other half, it's more variable. So it's got its seasons. It's got winter. It's got summer. Yeah. Probably has autumn and spring as well. Or if you're in America... What's the other word for autumn? Fall. Fall. <laughs> so it's probably got fall. So um, I think also if you yep. do Google search, yep. um, sometimes you get destinations that you wouldn't even think of, um, places that um, when you think, oh, maybe I'll, I'll travel there and you start to okay. investigate. Okay. Well, I've got, uh, I've got an idea. Sure. All right. So, for instance, we're interested in booking – something for november two weeks november we're traveling from melbourne and we want to go to asia Mm. let's say asia type it in google now this is live (laughs) not live for the listener but live for us type it in google and tell me what comes up as in what are the best places what are the best places to travel to in november i know vietnam comes up because that's 
that's one of the places that we're interested in traveling to. I know I'm also interested in maybe going back to Bangkok, like I've mentioned in a previous podcast. Yep. And I'm also interested in maybe going to Singapore, meeting yep. up with Chris Rainey, but I don't know if that's a possibility or not. Yeah. So I don't know what his schedule's like. Yeah. So when you look, obviously, there's various websites that give you information yep. about where the best places are. And depending on which website is mm-hmm. focused on attracting which um, area of the world, for example, a lot of the American websites talk about South America as being a great place to travel. From from America? Yes. Okay. Um, as well as the Caribbean. Caribbean? Yep. Parts of South America. Obviously, yep. it's quite a lower, large continent. Yep. So, where in South America? Um, they talk about Central America. They also mention Mexico as a, okay. another place. Um, okay. We also talk about uh, Thailand. Thailand, yes. Um, uh, New Zealand being New Zealand. a good place to, to okay. visit. Maybe I'll skip New Zealand for now. <laughs> Dubai. <laughs> Um, New comes Zealand up is going to hate me for saying that. No, nah, we've been to New nah, Zealand we're twice. Gonna, we've been already and we're going to go again one day. We've got family there. So, again, I think also you can narrow down your search by saying, you know, we're talking about weather. Yeah. So, is it that you want somewhere hot or do you want somewhere cool? Because if we're going somewhere cool, then we know November in the Northern Hemisphere is going to be cooler than in the Southern Hemisphere. I tell you what, I don't think I've ever planned a trip to be a cool one. However, some people do. Some That's people true. like to go, say, maybe to Canada for a for trip. Skiing for or, skiing or yeah. mountaineering. So it really is personal on the type of holiday you want. Absolutely, it's personal. People that work in high stress jobs or you, like a, in a physical role, perhaps just want the sun. Lounge around on a pool. And the relaxation. Drink mojitos. Yeah. Eat so, quesadillas. For sure. Mm. <laughs> Sounds like Mexico. Sounds like um, a Mexico trip. <laughs> So then also, or a Caribbean trip. Oh, my that God. That sounds good. But you know how long Car- Caribbea, <laughs> <laughs> I just made up a country. Do you know how long Caribbea takes from Melbourne? Yeah, quite a while. That's I a long I understand your funny speak. My funny speak. But, um, yes. Bloody Caribbea. I lost my train of thought. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Um, but, again, it's very personal, uh, the weather that you'd like to um relaxing and i think or you what think you would people like to relax do though when they're skiing potentially i guess sure. because i've never skied or snowboarded i've cross country skied right and that was too relaxing because i fell over <laughs> <laughs> you didn't do much work <laughs> i didn't do much work and dad said stay away from the yellow yellow i was gonna say yellow wee but i meant yellow snow, snow yeah stuff that joke up so <laughs> so basically the your activities will also determine um, where you would like to go. So you, ultimately, you want to find out what your fa- what your best um, scenario for a holiday would be, the yep. time of year, and therefore the weather that you're going to want to enjoy. And that you know what also that means is that you've got to determine what type of clothes to pack. Yeah, you probably need to book your holiday before you start packing clothes. So. <laughs> <laughs> Only reason why I say that because I had a thought about that Vietnam point that I made. Oh yeah, you've got a couple of seasons, so Depending you'd on have where to you pack go. for if you're saying if you're going down to Hanoi. Yeah, you need shorts and a singlet, yeah, and some thongs maybe, and if you're a girl, a nice skirt, some heels, whatever. <laughs> Whatever you feel like wearing. I don't know what right. girls wear. Okay, sure. And then you go up north to, say, um, Ho Chi Minh City. Yep. Is that right? I think it's the other way around, but... So, if you go up north to <laughs> Hanoi, you go south to Ho Chi Minh. I, I hope that is. I right. hope. Keep talking for a second. I'm just looking something up because I don't want to look like an idiot. Although, people might find that funny <laughs> that the travel man... So doesn't let's, actually let's know his cities, but our- he does. He doesn't know Vietnam that well. No, and that's probably why we've decided that it's more than likely the place we're going to go. So at the moment, I'm on Google. I've Googled Vietnam. Everyone, Google Vietnam with me right now. <laughs> go to maps. Yeah. Let's go to maps. This is fun because everyone's doing this at the moment. <laughs> now, increase... Damn it. Ho Chi Minh City's in the south. I thought so. So... Ho Chi Minh City, shorts, shorts, t-shirt, thongs, girls, singlets, thongs. Girls and singlets. Shorts as well. Yeah. And up north, so I'm talking Hanoi is north. So that's near China, man. Yeah. That's a, above 
Laos nearly. Uh, it's kind of same. Oh, same height as Hong Kong. So okay. that does have variable weather because I know Hong Kong has seasons. Sure. So that's what I'm trying to say is if you do plan a trip, say, in Vietnam yeah. for two weeks, like what we want to do in November. Sure. You're possibly traveling in- with the sense that you're going to have to bring a couple of different types of clothes. Yeah. That's a bigger suitcase. That's more weight. Yeah. Maybe go to Thailand. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. But um, so, yeah, time of year and weather will determine where you go. Absolutely. So you decide where you want to go? Absolutely. And then, and then do you, as you mentioned, decide on the type of accommodation that you want. Exactly. So, And also, I was going to say, if you're traveling with kids, yeah, you'll also need to consider a holiday that incorporates them. Of course. So uh, this could mean that, you know, you and your partner get a little bit of you time. Sure. You know, uh, get, you know, get some time to drink some nice wine. Yeah. Have some nice fish. And, and guess what? The kids get looked after. But there's only certain amount of places that do that. I remember as a kid. Yeah. That when my parents took us brothers to Fiji. Yeah. There was like a kids program. So okay. the resort that we stayed at. I had this whole kids program where kids would do little trips and do fun stuff. Mm-hmm. And then the parents would go off. So mum and dad would just leave us. Okay. As we got older, because we used to go to Fiji quite regularly. Yeah. We would go with them, like say to Manor Island and stuff like that. I've actually okay. got a whole diary of it. <laughs> and every line starts with, today I woke up and went for a swim. <laughs> today I woke up, had had something to eat, went for a swim. <laughs> but it was really funny because my greatest memories come from when my parents took me to Fiji as okay. a kid. Yeah. And I just think planning a holiday with kids is a lot of fun also. get You know, ask them questions. What do they want to do? Sure. You know? And the good thing is, like, for instance, Fiji from Melbourne is only three or four hours, four hours maybe? No, it's about five. Okay, there you go. Five hours. I know nothing. Five and a bit. So five and a bit hours. Yeah. But that's a good close place to go. But yeah. you got to also take into consideration Fiji's not cheap. No, it's not. And then you've got a couple of kids and it starts to get very expensive. So what's your other idea? Do you only travel locally within Australia if you're a, a couple of parents with a couple of kids? Potentially. You know? Or do you choose to take the kids maybe to somewhere in Asia, maybe Bali, Mm. where it will be quite a lot cheaper? Yeah, that's right. So these are things that travellers with kids got to consider as well. Yeah, for sure. To just find really cool and interesting because when you plan that trip, Mm. that is nearly as good as going on the trip. Oh, for sure. Because you start to get excited. You start to think about Where am I going to go? Am I going to stay in a resort? Mm -hmm. Just touch the mic. Am I going to go to a resort? Mm -hmm. Am I going to stay in a hotel? Yeah. Are we possibly doing Airbnb? Yeah. So trying to figure out that is even exciting and fun. Mm. So should you consider using Airbnb or do you want the convenience of a hotel Yeah. or a resort? So I've actually got some pros and cons for Airbnb and hotels slash resorts. So do you want to... We'll go through that now. Sure. So a pro with Airbnb is that you do have the freedom of having your own space. And everyone loves having their own space. You can cook. Mm-hmm. You can sit at the dining table, eat your cooked meal. Yeah. Um, you can unwind on a comfy couch. Yeah. Watch a little bit of Netflix or whatever. Basically feel like you're at home. The, also, the thing with yep. Airbnb is that you feel like a little bit of a local in the place that you're in. You do. People... At the door, hey, yeah, how are you? we've yeah, had the, we've no, experienced cool. that as well. Yeah, I love that um, too. And you feel like you're kind of living in that city, um, in a sense, because you're coming home. You're like you said, doing the domestic stuff, which sounds boring, but something what comforting. I think it's kind of fun and comforting. Yeah, definitely. I'm I'm a big fan. I I like Airbnb. I was talking to Dad previously, um, and I know he hates Airbnb. Yeah, he's had so many disappointments with them as a brand as a booking service but mm, you know i think i don't know with airbnb is you need to do your research on absolutely on, your, on the place you need to read the reviews you need to know where you're going to you need to look at your location you need yeah. to know in that place where you've decided to get that airbnb what's the location you want to be in where mm. do you specifically want to be in that city? And another um, pro, actually, to Airbnb, like what you're saying, is that there's a large number of people willing 
to host their apartment to yeah. you. Or their, I don't know, investments, I suppose. They're not always apartments where people live. Well, but that's true. Yeah. A lot of them are also managed by professional true. real estate agents. True. It's become a bit of a business. It absolutely is a business. The um, CEO for Airbnb is worth $3 billion. Potentially, yeah. That's what they say. He's worth about three or four billion dollars. Mm. It's amazing. So the other it's thing with well. Airbnb that's a positive as well, and we've experienced it is yep. sometimes you can stay in places that are a little bit quirky. Oh, absolutely. Um, so quirky we, places are fun. Yeah. So we stayed in a place in um, Manly in Sydney that was an artist's place and had some really interesting pieces in his house. His place was amazing. Yeah, really cool. Um, and we've also stayed in another place in Sydney, in Potts Point, where it was a really cute little studio that um, you could clearly tell the owner loved and he wanted to share with everyone because it was in a great location. And um, He was a lovely guy. And he was a really nice guy. And so you get those experiences where you meet people um, that genuinely want you in their place and you feel comfortable and you look after it. And he wanted to... Uh, go outside of his way. No, that doesn't make sense. Go out of his he, way. Thank you. He wanted to go out of his way to help us. Yeah, for sure. Although we know Sydney really well. I lived in Sydney for a while, but he still wanted to make sure that we felt happy. Yeah. And we knew where we were going and stuff like that. Yeah. And our experiences in Japan as well um, with Airbnb, with um, our hosts really caring for their guests, you know, letting us know where the umbrellas are when, when it was raining. Um, um. And he wanted, he was like at our beck and call in a sense. Yeah. He wanted to make sure that if we ever had an issue, yeah, he was available to us. That's right. And I think that's that's beautiful. So it, it works great when you get some really great experiences. And I think in your dad's case, he hasn't had those yet. I think he's had the bad experiences, although the good experiences. I'm not sure if he if he even takes that into account. Yeah. I really don't know. I don't know what he's comparing it to, really. Well, if he's comparing it to a hotel, then I'm not sure. I don't think you can get that same experience. No, it's different. But there there are cons to Airbnb. Definitely. What did you just do then? <laughs> <laughs> I yawned. Yeah, Mandy yawned. It's okay. <clears throat> so a con to Airbnb, in my opinion, is you'll be staying in someone else's place. So mm-hmm. it is someone else's place, guys. So you got guy... That one singular person. Always <laughs> got to remember it's... I'm talking to one person, Mandy. It's me. No, it's the guy. <laughs> it's that one person, guy or girl, talk, listening to us. Okay, all right. But you've got to take that into consideration. So if that's displeasing to you, mm. then you, you should rather stay in a hotel. I think what you're referring to, sometimes it can be a bit personal. Well, look at some of those pictures that people post yeah. on Airbnb. Yeah. They're posting pictures of their apartment, mm. but of their cupboard open with all their clothes. Yeah. I don't care about your clothes. I don't want them there. Yeah. If you want to rent your place out on Airbnb, make sure all the cupboards are empty. Yeah. Or and put your um, stuff away or Put whatever. your stuff away. Make it neat. And make sure that the people that come there to rent off you know exactly what they have to do. Yeah. Give a guideline, whatever. But you know, that's that's a bad bad thing sometimes. Yeah. Uh, one other, a few other cons is that you actually have to make your own bed. Well, you don't yeah. have to. Yeah. You can leave it messy. It doesn't matter. But, but no one's going to come there. Yeah. You're make not your getting bed. room service. Also, it's a requirement by Airbnb that the place you've rented is left clean and tidy. Mm-hmm. So you really got to take that into an account, don't you, Mando? Oh, for sure. You need to make. Um, I mean, I, my comments in our, sorry, our comments in our, um, reviews is that we always leave the place tidy and that's just to me. That's what people say about us. Yeah. Yeah. And although we're paying to stay there, it's not, I think, I think when they're sharing, well, sharing a place that's their own or their business, you don't, um, expect that someone's going to make a mess in there. And it's just respectful to leave it tidy. Mm, mm, mm. I was going to say another con is there's no buffet breakfast. (laughs) And you know how much I love the buffet breakfast. (laughs) Yeah. So, unfortunately, unless you've gone out to a supermarket the night before like I did with my mate in Japan, we bought bacon, eggs, so forth. You were there. Yeah. We also bought some Wagyu steaks and 
finely sliced wagyu so steak. Yum. It was so good. Yeah. Mushy, mushy. <laughs> Are you answering the phone or? Uh, is that not? No. Okay. <laughs> mushy, mushy. Recently, our booking to a lovely. Um, actually, I want to talk about this. So, recently, when we booked that place in Greenwich, Greenwich Village, is that Greenwich, right? Greenwich, Greenwich Village. Yeah. Manhattan, they yeah. cancelled. Yeah. Because the host wanted to sell up immediately. This really got us upset. Yeah. So, um, so it'd been booked since October. It, yeah. So, it'd been booked like three, three months, four months, maybe yeah. five months. Yeah. But we got this email. From Airbnb, yep. from this nice guy from Airbnb. I'll go into that later, but he basically told us that the place uh, was, was no longer available to us. Yep. It was cancelled. Yep. Didn't know why until I started asking him questions. Yep. Um, but I, I found out a little bit more about the situation. She was actually selling it quite immediately. Yeah. Uh, but still... If you had any in indication that maybe you might have to sell, yeah. why would you list it? Yeah. I know this is probably an outlier, yeah. but still, it's, it's pretty annoying. Well, it's not necessarily an outlier because another con, I think, yeah. when searching for places, because we were looking, um, obviously, for a new place since that one was cancelled, mm. um, a couple of the requests to book... Um, Airbnb places become quite frustrating because you get replies that say, um, sorry, not available. But the, the old place, request to book, I hate that. Yeah, but the place is actually listed as available. So we had we had that happen to us. We requested to book a place. Yeah, that was um, annoying. And the lady um, immediately messaged us and said, oh, look, I've got a long-term renter in there and it's not available. Yeah. So I replied and advised her to take take it down yes. because it's clearly an issue if people are looking for a place to stay and you've got this as available, but it's not. And she apologized, but, mm. you know, the unprofessionalism sometimes of the people that are um, listing their places. That's what lets Airbnb definitely. down. Definitely. The think, unprofessionals. I think um, they want the money for people to stay in their places, but they don't realize there's actually work behind it as well. And if you're providing a service and you need to be prepared to actually provide it or be accurate in your descriptions of what's actually going on. Mm. I think people use it to make a quick buck and don't realize that it is actually work that's involved. The good experiences we've had yeah. are people that have had multiple guests, I suppose, um, with the exception of one, but they've had multiple guests. They know, so they know what they know the they process. Know what to do. The process they, is yeah, there. Definitely. And they've gone through it. Look, we identified... Greenwich Village as a place that we wanted to stay in one of the areas. Yeah. So we wanted to make sure that we stayed there regardless. If you're wondering, Greenwich Village is a beautiful old part of Manhattan. It's got a nice walking street. It's got um, nice trees. Yeah. Which is really uncommon, I reckon, in certain parts of New York. Know. It's, especially yeah, it's quite nice. Old buildings. Old and- buildings. Old brick buildings, I think, yeah. from memory. But it's- Brownstones. Um, that 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 walking street is littered with nice shops, restaurants, bars, cafes. Yeah, and it's got a quite quite a close location to the metro, which yeah. is another identifier for us. We yeah. wanted to make sure we were close to a train, and it was pretty safe area, area as well. Yeah. So I mean, we did search Airbnb until we did find a place, and we did find a place. Yeah, we ended um, up having to spend more because where we did. There was like less, 400 bucks more. Yeah, there was less availability because it had, you know, we'd booked quite in early yeah. with the other place. And so, obviously, as time gets closer, sometimes you don't have the ability to have as much of a range. Mm. However, we did look at hotels as well. We um, did. As an option because we thought Absolutely, if we, if we, we couldn't did. get an apartment, we'd go to a hotel. But the other, I know you've already got to cons, but the other pro is that it is often cheaper to book through Airbnb, and, and this was the case as well. Absolutely. The good thing is, though, with me talking to this Airbnb assistant or whoever he was, we did get a $50 US voucher yeah. for the issues. Yeah, just as a goodwill sort of thing. As a goodwill thing. So yeah. that was nice. Um, yeah. Now, um, have you got any more cons or pros towards Airbnb? Because I want to talk about hotels and resorts. Um, look, I just want to say with Airbnb, 
it is something that I go to as a default in places to stay now. Yeah. Um, I do like the experience of uh, being in a place that's kind of I can call my own for the week or whatever I'm it's a there. Nice, it's a nice feeling, isn't it? Is it is a nice feeling. And I do recommend it to people. I've often, you know, in my work when I speak to young people or the yeah. people I work with, they often are skeptical about going into Airbnb. They don't know what it is. You would think it would be the opposite. But- mm. I suppose the people that I deal with are I a little bit tech savvy. Yeah, some tech of, savvy. I mean, um, some of them aren't worldly, I suppose, and so they ask me questions. They're the same ones that eat uh, Western food in Asian countries, <laughs> potentially. Oh my god! But um, yeah, so I always say you need to do your research first. You need to look at all the reviews, understand where you're staying, understand what it relates to everywhere else, um, as in the sites that you're going to see, the things that you're interested in. And book accordingly because even though uh, people's expectations around the level of um, comfort like beds and decor and all that is is varies, location is really important. Um, you know, whether you're going to spend a long time getting to places that you want to see could determine how much fun you have in your holiday. So hotel, Airbnb, regardless, do your research about where first you want to be. Absolutely. You want to know where you're going. Yeah. I must say one one con for Airbnb, for resorts, for hotels, for everything, they never have good pillows. No. And, a, and a good pillow is essential for me because I've, I've got a bad neck. Yeah. And if I don't get a good night's sleep on a good pillow, mm. it's going to wreck my holiday. Often cheap pillows. Now, obviously, yeah, mm. they're often those really flat pillows that are littered with feathers. Oh, I hate feather pillows. With feathers. That's not right. They're filled like, with feathers. I don't like down pillows. No down pillows. And please. I don't like super thin pillows. Anyway, we sound like we're quite particular. And I'm just like, <sighs> not really. We're no, not we're not particular. particular. We just know what we like, and we've travelled enough to know what we like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But back in the day when we started travelling. There was no Airbnb. No. And we only had hotels or resorts. That's right. So here's some pros and cons of booking a resort. Sure. Or a hotel. Oh. So one of the things, you don't have to worry about anything once you're checked in. Everything except for a mini bar is accounted for. That's true. So um, you don't have to make your bed, which is great. Perfect. You can just... Um, let the bed do what it wants. So that's great. You get you fresh just, towels. Fresh towels, which is really nice. Some, I play, Airbnb so, place we stayed at only yeah. had two towels. Oh, yeah, that's another for thing. For quite some time. That's a con, Mandy. Yes, yeah, sorry. It's another con towards Airbnb. To Airbnb. But anyway. That's right. But the thing is, these people that do run these Airbnbs aren't all professionals. No. So, and some of them probably have one shower a week. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they give you two to towels save money. over one week. But another um, pro to booking a hotel or resort is that, yeah, like I said before, the bed doesn't have to be made. You can just walk out, walk out the door and start exploring all your surrounds. So, um, and there's usually a safe where you can lock all your yeah, valuables. And true. there's no safes in Airbnbs. No. And I always think, is the place going to get burgled? As well, because that's always like that. a possibility. But you're right. I mean, you've got to think about it. Yeah. Uh, and there's generally a buffet, buffet, <laughs> a buffet, a buffet breakfast that can either be booked with your accommodation, or you can just roll up there and say, "I'm room two one seven, and I'm Mister D A W." Yeah. And uh, that can be a tad expensive sometimes, as we realised in Mexico, Playa <laughs> del Carmen, where. It was costing us a bloody arm and a leg yeah, just for breakfast. So there's some uh, pros to booking a hotel or resort. I actually don't have any cons. I, th I think you the don't. only... I didn't actually get to that point, but I think a con to booking a hotel or resort, it doesn't feel like home. No. And some of the places are tiny. Yeah. And, Cost as well. And, the, and you can't cook. No. Which I enjoy cooking sometimes. And the thing that therefore your meals cost more. Well, therefore, yeah, absolutely, um, the meals cost more. It doesn't... Um, hotels are located yeah. in central places, which are, are really good. And they're not generally located in suburbs. No. Which uh, will 
yeah, decrease the price. can happen with Airbnb. It can happen in Airbnb. I mean, with resorts, you're booking a resort because you want to go there. I mean, we spoke in our previous podcast with mm. the Cancun, with the Playa del Carmen podcast that we did, the resort differences between all-inclusive and mm. not all-inclusive. So, there's that. And um, when you are booking a resort-type holiday, I suppose the only thing that you need to look at there is the cost of what's included in those because they do vary as well, as in the type of accommodation, pools, beaches. Definitely if you're in Asia, you want to make sure you're in a resort. How far is it from the main street? If you want to go out for dinner, how far do you have to walk or what's the cost going to be involved with transportation? Um, You know, they're obviously things you need to look at when it comes to resorts as Mm. well as hotels. Location is everything. For me, I think it's the most important thing. Oh, absolutely it is. Um, if you've got a hotel that you've booked that's five k's away from the main town or a main beach, what's the point? Taking well, a taxi in every day, you, you can, but and that taxi may not cost you that much, so that's fine. Maybe you spend that extra money in a really good place a bit further out. Well, that's rather a possibility than a cheap too, place if you don't have in. the money. That's it. That's a really good point, man, dear. Yeah. Um, do you like looking through? guidebooks or would you rather go online to do your research because i don't mind a little bit of both i'm the same i like both so i like opening up a guidebook Mm -hmm. and just having a look at the day-to-day things sometimes they do a schedule for you Mm -hmm. morning lunch afternoon and what you can achieve in that day yeah and i really like looking at that and just thinking to myself can i do this or can i add a little bit more i know sometimes when i do plan a holiday yeah I just put, I plan too much. And I look <laughs> at that guidebook and go, oh, I can do this, I can do that, I can do this, I can do that. I even write it down mm-hmm. on a piece of paper. Then I look at the paper and I go, no, I can only do two of these things. Mm. So you've got to compromise as well. I think some the the nature of um, some people's travels is ticking things off lists. and I, I'm a list ticker. Yeah, but sometimes people go away and say, I've got to do all these things in this particular place. Yeah. I mean, to take a photo or upload it or whatever to say they've been there and done all this. I'm not that type of traveler. I'd rather do the things that I enjoy um, first and foremost and get to the things that, you know, the major sites that maybe are not such a big deal to me. Um, and yeah. people will ask you, have you been there? And you're like, mm, not really. You know, I didn't go there. So, for example, in LA, everyone's like, did you go to... Um, What's that? What's Hollywood. It? Hollywood, yeah. And that terrible place. And we, we said when we were there, we're like, With better the go. With stars on the ground. And we I was went. walking over the stars. I couldn't give two <laughs> shits. So we went there for like two hours, maybe. <laughs> no, I didn't even think it was two hours. No, it wasn't two hours. Um, and it wasn't our, our thing. And The glitz and glamour. Yeah. I talk about all the whereas, time. I'm not into it. Nah. Whereas some people stay around West Hollywood and they love that sort of stuff and for us it's like the last place we want to go so many people and just la has so much more to offer and i think when you begin to look at guidebooks Mm. um i love the dk eyewitness guidebooks they're clearly the best Uh, well they've got pictures in them depending on who you are i like them because they are graphically they're really nice she just sounded dumb just then they've got pictures in them (laughs) they are (laughs) quite nice yeah they are nice um some of the Lonely Planet ones that have more of the more photos text, and all that. Font. Well, there's newer newer versions of them. They're great too. Mm. Um, some people love Lonely Planet for the depth of information that they have so much in, in the guides that are... And they're all well-written. All well-written, all fantastic. All knowledgeable. Um, but, I mean, there's other ones as well. And I love the top tens of the city for Eyewitness. Oh, yeah. So you just get poignant facts and information that's straight to the point straight to the point makes it easy for you and every time we decide where we're going to go we buy a guidebook because nothing for us replaces a book um yes you can look online yes you can watch youtube but having something with you when you're away Mm. as well is really great too yeah yeah vietnam so we'll look at that and and again that determines where we go and you mentioned um youtube yeah I mean, I that's, a, that's a recent thing we've started to look at. Probably only the last couple of trips that we started yeah. doing YouTube, probably since about 2010, sure. I would say, uh, around then. After that, I think. You reckon after? Yeah, definitely. Well, 
YouTube's a really good um, source of information. Yeah. Especially if uh, you get the right person giving you that information. Uh, You get to know what you can and can't do and what's okay in the country and what's not. I mean, you can get that same information from guidebooks, but I feel from someone else, I feel related, relatable. Or someone talking to you. Or someone talking to you and they say, all right, you can't do this, you can't do that, and they're actually in that country yeah i think that's a lot of fun yeah um like for instance in singapore yeah you got to be really careful of littering and and chewing chewing gum gum and all that there's hefty fines associated with it i'm not sure if guidebooks tell you that and if they do then maybe they skip over it no they do they They do do. yeah well that's good i know a lot of the youtubers will talk about it and so forth but um i probably don't need to say it but be mindful when you're overseas Mm. of certain things you can and can't do. But some of my favorite YouTubers, yeah. should I go through them? Definitely. I've only got four. Okay. Two of them are Marks. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. One's a Chris and one's an Alex. Okay. One of them's a friend and three are future friends. Yeah. <laughs> sure. So I'll s- start with Chris Rainey. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful man. Yellow Productions. Has his YouTube company, Yellow Productions. Yeah. He makes wonderful videos, very informative. Fun. He knows what he's talking about. They're a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, they're well researched. Yeah. And it, he has a lot of big travel experiences. And he's got a ton of travel experience. So he's been doing it since 2008, I think. I think so, yeah. From memory. Uh, and he, he, loves, he loves giving you information on yeah. where to go, um, what to do, sometimes what not to do to do yeah pros and and cons of things pros and and cons and you know he's very listenable yeah so someone that when you listen to him you'll you'll keep watching yeah you'll keep watching chris but he's great on yellow production someone that does food and travel is mark wines he's fantastic yeah now he's been doing it probably for about the same amount of time as chris i'm guessing Mm -hmm. he has a channel migrationology where he'll go around he does a lot of thailand because he lives there in bangkok yeah but he'll review food uh food places to go to he'll review also different um points Uh, of interest to travel to I think what I like about Mark Wines is he gives it a bit of a cultural spin. He does. So he he because he's quite open minded because he's he's an American married to a Thai living in Thailand with Chinese heritage. I yeah, think, with Chinese, Chinese. Her- heritage. I think he likes to get involved in the culture and the culture related to the food of that area. You can absolutely tell, and it's great. And he's so happy when he eats something; he nearly falls off his chair <laughs> if he loves it that much. True, true. Um, also, another guy um, to watch is Walter from yeah. Walter's World. Yeah, Mark Walters. He's yeah. he does a lot of the what's bad about what's the ten worst things about this city, or what's yeah. the ten best things about this city. Yeah, I really, I really like that. I mean, some people might get on. Their nerves, but I actually really enjoy knowing what Me too. is the bad thing about that city and then actually knowing what the best thing about that city is. His videos are great if you if you want to know those He also of vis- goes places with his kids. He so does. That's he travels a, with his family. another spin on that as well. I mean, he travels um, with kids and so you his movie videos relate to that as well. And he's also someone like, like um, the other Mark, mm-hmm. Mark Wines and Chris, are very good at delivering yeah. the information to you. Yeah. And they don't beat around the bush. Yeah. Another guy I love, I mean, there's plenty of YouTubers that I like watching that are this doing travel shows, but this is Mandy's favorite. Yeah. He's a little bit of a hunk. <laughs> Alex Hunter, if you're listening to this, buddy, <laughs> I want you on the podcast. So, and he hosts Attaché. Yeah. Which is, I would say it's, a, it's the best filmed uh, best production. Best produced yeah. travel series on the interweb. Yeah. On the interweb. I think um, with uh, – I love the way it's they're, they're produced. He's got practical information. He doesn't um, do a lot of them. He doesn't do a lot, so each one is great quality. He talks about getting to and from airports, the costs of things, um, the currency. The cost of uh, a Big Mac. The cost of a Big Mac is his test across each country <laughs> or each city. Test. Um, and he does, lately he's been doing some really cool um, 
things in relation to the culture of places or or incidents that have occurred. Like for example, he did an awesome one on Beirut. It was oh, that it was, was fantastic. A really great video mentioned the war, talked about the scars of that city and how it's you know evolved and it's a really amazing video just to watch and it doesn't get the love that it deserves and so forth definitely not and then he did one recently what did i watch kyushu but we haven't watched it yet he's just been there and And he said it was a most beautifully filmed yeah um youtube segment so we need to watch that one so we've got to watch that but i watched an la one i love that one la is one of my favorite cities so um that's really good so I, i can't speak highly of the attache um youtube videos just going back to the other guys, I yeah. remember Chris Rainey and Mark Wines were the first two YouTubers, travel YouTubers, yeah. that I started to watch. True. And then I found out about Alex Hunter from Attaché and Mark Walters from Walters World. Yeah. So um, I will leave links, or yeah. not links, I'll leave information at the end of this podcast in the show notes. Yeah. Of how to search for their YouTube channels. Yeah. And anything else. Um, the other thing... Are we getting to YouTube now? Because I really want to talk about how much I hate certain videos on YouTube. Well, yes, we are. So, you want to go for it? <laughs> so, I mean... So, other YouTubers other than these guys so that I don't, do it really well. I'm going to let people know, the people that sit there and put really terrible music to the poorly video recorded um scenes of their holidays that I don't the really... The multiple drone shots. That I really don't care... For your for your videos, <laughs> I don't know who sits there and watches this and thinks that it's going to somehow enlighten them on the place that they're going. They all have the same soundtrack. Mm. I don't understand why this annoying high pitched voice is constantly used to the back of dance music or electronic music. It's horrible. Um, I also I start to I'm sounding like your dad. I yeah, also you do sound like him. I also um, don't want the obligatory drone shot because. Again, I'm never going to see this place from the air and unless I land in that place, and I don't care. Actually, Mark Wines is starting to do a lot of drone shots. He's an exception. He's allowed. He's but, allowed. He's allowed. Um, yeah, I, I just find those videos really irrelevant, and I I don't know what who watches them or why you would watch them, but these other guys are yeah. informative. These videos aren't. No, and these these videos are generally, yeah, the drone shots, but also a lot of shots of... I don't want to come across as being, oh, I don't even know what the term for it is, but yeah. a lot of them are just the girls. Yeah. And they're half naked in yeah. bikinis or in skirts or whatever. Even and it's the guys all about them. And, and even the guys are topless and stuff. But they give nothing. They no. actually give you zero. And they're the ones that are completing the, you know, I've got a list of things to do and things to see because they're the famous ones and they're, the, the ones that I need to tick off some sort of list, they're the ones that are videotaping that for, I don't know, for bragging rights or what it is. It's not actually it's for It's about for how the I genuine... can travel for yeah. nothing. Yeah. So, yeah. They do have millions of views and uh, millions of- Maybe I'm I'm the idiot that doesn't no. like them, but, but maybe it's, our, like. it's our age group, but I don't know. I don't get it. I don't want to watch a 26-year-old- um, film his holiday and give me no information. No. It's about giving me information. Yeah. I'm a travel podcaster. I give you information as a listener. So when I listen to a YouTuber, I want the YouTuber to give me information. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and I, I think mean, yeah. um, there are other YouTubers that do give information, but the ones that we've highlighted are probably the ones that we relate to the most. Start with them first and then carry on. There yeah. are a few others. Yeah. I'm just thinking of... These couple of brothers that are pretty good. Oh, the Venga Ven- brothers. Venga brothers. Or, <laughs> no, are they the Venga brothers? <laughs> no. Is that a song? Yeah, they're really. The big. Venga brothers. <laughs> I think they're the Vega brothers. I think. Something like the Vega brothers. I mean. Are we watched in Miami one of theirs. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. Um, um, there's also that that Asian boy that I like. And I don't mean. Oh, Gunnarola. Gunnarola. No, he's, he's a bit of fun. He's, he's actually quite a funny guy, Gunnarola. Yeah. yeah. So I'll actually add them to my list as well. So. Yeah. The Venga brothers, the Vega <laughs> brothers, Gunnarola for a couple of fun like, off the off, fun. For just fun, <laughs> just fun. They're they're fun guys, um, but other than those six, I guess now, yeah, I wouldn't actually bother listening to any other just of the don't other. Look or, at the, don't fall unless for the, you like good looking women. Don't fall for the clickbait. Is what and I'm trying clickbait, to say. The bloody clickbait. You're falling for it. 
I always fall for clickbait. Yeah, but everyone is. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I know. Clickbait's terrible. But anyway, that's another podcast about clickbait, which we'll never get on to doing. You know what, Mandy? We've been going 55 minutes now. Wow. Got anything else to say about planning for a holiday? Just know your budget. Know where you want to go. Look at the time of year. Um, and really think about where you're going to go before you book anything. Do your research. Absolutely. Do your research. Because it's important. And, and the other thing I want to mention is sure, don't be scared to do it yourself. I've met a lot of people that I don't know why they still use travel agents. I'm sorry, travel agents, but you can do so many things yourself. Look, if, World you, travel. If, if you can't be bothered <laughs> to do it, okay, totally understand. If Fair you want, enough. I mean, if you want to pay for it yourself, fine, pay for it as in for mm, someone to do it, not a problem. But but some of those trips, so you need a travel agent. Like say you're booking a, a safari in Africa. I don't know. Maybe I think you don't so. really need to. Well, you need you need someone to help you do a, a safari or do a tour. Well, I'm going to mention someone on the podcast now who asked me a question today mm. on Facebook. Mm. He's someone that you know. Mm. He's someone I know. Mm. Carson. Mm. So Carson asked me today. Yeah. He's going to love that he's been mentioned. <laughs> yeah. He asked me today that um, how do I plan a safari trip overseas in Africa? And I pretty much told him that you might want to do your research, mate, because Africa's dangerous. And planning a safari, you might want to get that done professionally because you want to be able to see the big five. Yes, but also if you do enough research yourself, you'll know which tour you want to book. But I think some people like Carson and others yeah. probably don't want to do the research or don't know where to start. Potentially. So, I mean. Anyway, all I'm saying is you can do a lot of stuff yourself, for sure. You can do 90% yeah. yourself. But Air there fares, are some things that you might need help. Yeah, look, airfares, I've looked online myself, gotten um, Skyscanner.com. Yep. Got them prices and then gone to um, uh, agents, yeah, and given them the price, and they can't beat it. No, they can't. So, I mean, you can do it yourself, you just need the time. So, if someone, so don't be scared, is what I'm yeah. trying to say. So, say if someone wanted to book a, a hotel or an apartment, a uh, hotel or resort, would you use like booking.com or a go to look? Or- you can, they're all pretty much interconnected somehow yeah you can identify the property that you like and go direct to that property website yeah, you we've use, done that before especially yeah. when we had to talk to that that hotel about that strange time layover time that yeah. we we're going to be in la so you can use those websites to get a whole bunch of information about certain places like a yeah. list um and then go to the properties yourself and see whether you can book directly through them and it may be cheaper for you too But, yeah, use any search engine, any ability to be able to provide you with a list of things. That's what they're designed to do. Yes, you won't get everything, but there are multiple options for you to look at. Multiple sites, I mean. The world's your oyster, as they say. (laughs) That's it. So corny. So corny. And on that (laughs) note, Mandy, I'm going to call it a night or a day. Great. So thank you very much again for joining myself and... Mandy, yeah, the person that is a podcaster, maybe. <laughs> uh, thanks for joining us. Remember to um, like my page yep. on Facebook, Travel Man Podcast. Yeah. I'm actually on Stitcher now, so you can look at me through on Stitcher. I might be on my iHeartRadio. I'm not sure. But I'm on Instagram. I'm on Twitter. I'm Travel Man Pod on Twitter. Travel Man Podcast on Instagram. You can find this podcast on all major podcasting apps. Yeah. And I've really enjoyed giving you this information today. So Mandy and I have both enjoyed ourselves. Yeah. And we'll do it again one day or soon (laughs) enough. Sure. I just can't wait for that holiday now that we've done all that (laughs) planning for it. So ta-ta. See you later, guys. And we hope you enjoyed the podcast. Thank you.